Hello, everyone. We are live again. And today I want to talk about what happened one week ago in this country. As you probably know, we had presidential elections and Trump won. And <clears throat> today I want to go a little deeper into how I made the world's most accurate prediction about that election. As you probably remember, I said Trump is going to win and Trump is going to win with exactly 312 electoral votes. And I lined out all the states and swing states he's going to win. So I mapped out the whole thing with total accuracy. And I don't do these predictions very often. And if I do them, I tend to be right. The last time I did that, as you remember, was about the Tesla shareholder vote. And the fact that the shareholders will vote again for Tesla's and Elon's compensation package I told you exactly how many votes he's going to get on that and that we will relocate to Texas, which most people thought the shareholders are not going to approve, but they did. And I predicted that too. So first of all, why is it so important that I make these predictions and why do I put my you know, mental capacities into that? Why do I think this is very important? And I can tell you why. Because if we want to build the future, we need to first understand how it works, how reality works, and we need to be able to simulate that reality accurately. So when it comes to these very high stakes things, and Tesla was very high stakes for me because I'm holding Tesla shares and I need to know what to do. And of course, the election. Why is it so important that we can predict who's going to win? Because it tells us when we make these predictions, how good we are in understanding and simulating reality and looking through the noise. So I think it's a very fundamental skill set that we need to develop if we want to truly build the future. So we can also place bets, by the way, if we understand how the future works. And that's exactly what I did. I bought a ton of Kamala puts, forecast contracts that go up to $1 if Kamala loses. I knew she's going to lose. And I put my money where my mouth was. And of course, you know, it's very important to be right. Otherwise, you lose your money. And uh, let's go into these predictions and what actually happened there exactly. So I want to first start with the YouTube video I did, uh, I think a week before the election. And then I want to do in, go into my tweet where I outlined why I believe Trump's going to win with 312 electoral votes. Um, that's the second part of this video. So... Uh, I will link the video that I did one week before the election with a model right here. Um, but I will jump with you right now into the actual model um, and explain quickly what happened there. So what I did is I looked through all the noise and I looked through what people are commenting on. I cut out all these media sources that are just, quite frankly, lying or propagandizing us, especially on the Democrat mainstream media side. But we have to be cautious also on the more right-wing or independent side. Um, everyone has their opinions and becomes very irrational. So I thought, let's create a model. And here's my model um, that I did before. And what I did is very simple. I looked at the only source that we have for actual numbers. And... I looked at the polls, the RCP average polls. So you take all the polls and build the average. And uh, what you see here from October 28th, uh, you see that Trump was actually leading in all swing states in, and in the popular vote, which is very interesting. What I did then is uh, I compared it to um, the polls at November 2nd, 2020. Because if you look at polls, they are worthless. You need to you know, compare them to the past. And I looked at November 2nd, 2020. What did the polls there say, uh, Trump versus Biden? And you see that Trump was actually behind in all states and in the uh, popular vote. I then uh, also did uh, look at the results of the election 2020 and created the delta. Uh, I call this the Trump polling error effect. So here you see how much more Trump actually got than the polls in 2020. And you see Trump is ahead in all of these swing states, uh, very significant percentages in terms of 
the actual results over his polling results. And uh, except for Georgia, where Georgia was more or less accurate in 2020. So what I did then is I took these quantified biases and first of all, did a qual uh, qualitative assessment. Did the media improve? And this analysis is not in this table, but I, I thought about it like, okay, did they improve 2020 over 2016? Short answer is no. They remain as terrible as they were before. And if you know anything about polling, it's actually a propaganda tool, right? So polls are not objective, but the pollsters are often connected to mainstream media outlets. So they don't want to tell you the truth. They want to tell you uh, what they want to tell you in order for you to make the wrong decision. So that's why pollsters tend to not learn, right? They're not interested in learning. They're interested in creating bias. And that means for me, quantitatively, well, very likely if 2020 over 2016, there is no big improvement over the error effect, there also won't be a big improvement to now. So now we have these quantitative biases. We have the actual um, polling results where Trump leads in every single swing state that compares to him being behind in every single swing state. And then what I did is a quantitative model here where I said, okay, what would that mean for the actual election this year? If 100% of the polling error stays in effect, you know, how much does he win or what are the results in each thing state? If the polling error is reduced by 50%, what is the result? If the polling error is reduced to 0% and all the polls are actually accurate and non-biased, non-biased in this way, uh, what is the result? And by the way, one bias is, uh, you know, kind of against Trump. So... I did that and then I calculated the resulting electoral votes. And you know what you see here? At 100% error, he gets 312 votes. At 50% error, he gets 312 votes. And at 0% error, he also gets 312 votes. Right? The only difference was at 0% error that uh, his win will be is very tight in Michigan, for example. So only 0.2%. It turns out it was actually bigger, so the, the bias he stayed intact. And he even wins the popular vote. So when I saw that, it's like, it's very simple. Forget all your biases and say, well, the model tells us, the smart model here, tells us 312 is the best bet. I also elaborated then a little bit like, it's very unlikely that he gets much more than 312. It's more likely that he gets less, but it's most likely that he gets 312. And that's what I used. So of course, some additional consideration that I want to go into. So let's go quickly through my tweet. Um, what I tweeted there and um, why that also helped making that decision. So here is my tweet. First of all, I posted this beautiful picture. That is my predicted result. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. I said that, I think, 48 hours before the election. This is my final verdict. This is the result, 312, and then all these little swing states. And that's exactly what happened. So why? Let's go through this. First of all, my point number one was the average RC, uh, RCP poll shows Trump in the lead. Bias, that's what I just explained. Number two, I saw the betting markets. So I try to have additional angles on this. So we are not just looking at one source of reasoning, but here's another source of reasoning, the betting markets. And you see, well, Trump was ahead in the betting markets too. Okay, that's another uh, thing. Early voting, we knew at that point. Well, GOP was heavily advantaged over 2020. Okay, that's the next kind of Bayesian level that tells us, well, very likely Trump. So number one is pro-Trump, first method here. Second method, bet betting markets, pro-Trump. Third method, early voting, pro-Trump. Uh, then that was a qualitative thing, number four. I haven't heard of a single person in my friends group or even social network who was a Trump voter in 2020 who said he's voting now for Kamala. But I've heard from dozens of people directly and hundreds online that switched from Democrat to, to Trump. And that turned out to be right. Number five, very important. Number five, Elon was managing Pennsylvania. And if you know Elon, he's not going to fail. Elon is a smart guy. And Elon, we know that Elon is extremely capable. So Elon jumping in charge, that was another Bayesian layer where I thought there is just no way in hell that Elon is not going to succeed with that. 
Then in Michigan, the Muslim vote and the Kamala uh, Biden disaster in Israel, it was clear that the Muslim community was in complete uproar against uh, Kamala and Biden when they are strong in Michigan. So I thought, oh, she's going to lose Michigan too, because that's enough to swing the state. There's just another confirmation for the Michigan uh, uh, debacle, which was uh, uh, turned out the way I predicted. And then on the qualitative side, you saw all this momentum. RFK, Tulsi Gabbard, Elon Musk, uh, Joe Rogan. These are all liberals. These are all liberal thinkers. They are definitely not conservatives. The fact that they're all joining forces with Trump means that Trump systemically shifts to the center and the bad things about Trump that people might have perceived are definitely going to move into a center direction with these uh, super dudes and uh, gals joining. So that is another pro-Trump effect. Then Democrat vote fortification, whatever you think about cheating in 2020, whatever happened in 2020, I think everyone with a reasonable mind knows there was some shenanigans going on in 2020. Uh, I don't judge that. I mean, I do, but I'm not commenting on that. Um, but we knew that the probability that whatever happened there, the so-called fortification, like a little shenanigans, 2020 would be whatever they are, would be less in 2024 because the attention of Republicans and everyone uh, and citizen journalists was so intense that whatever was pulled off in 2020 couldn't have been pulled off to the same extent in 2024. So that effect would be also diminished. And we saw that's true. Then nine, the macro trends look horrible for Democrats. Over 70% believe the country is on the wrong track. We have inflation. We have Israel-Palestine. Uh, 80% plus of Democrats are against open borders. So all the conventional political things point against Democrats. Uh, at the same time, the GOP is more united and its tent more expanded. That's to Tulsi Gabbard and RFK and so on. So, so Republicans kind of move to the center. Democrats are in trouble. Um, then <laughs> number 11, we have the Trump wonder weapons, right? We have Elon Musk, Joe Rogan. We have Peanut and Fred, if, if you follow that. So all, and the Bitcoiners and now Ron, Ron Paul. This is a huge, huge undercurrent in the internet that happened there. So that's another big thing. And then Kamala's only uh, Hail Mary chance was to actually get the female vote out in her favor to an enormous, unusual extent. And you can read my tweet here. But um, I basically said, I know a lot of women voters, and I don't have the feeling that any of the independent women uh, is moving towards Kamala. I think the theory that Democrats have that there's suddenly this ghost vote, uh, meaning all these female voters who suddenly decide they totally want to support this, I never saw this coming. So I that is a Hail Mary hope that despite these 11 factors before there is a random ghost vote of enormous proportions where women come out and vote for Kamala, assuming they believe her, why would they? Turns out 53% of white women, for example, voted Trump. So the female vote actually swung in some instances towards Trump. So that's the bottom line here. Um, that is a quick summary why I came to this prediction. I just wanted to share this. Uh, I just want to share more about how I think about things, especially when I, I'm right, so we can learn from that. Um, and what does it all mean? I think I like these things because they put me on the spot. In case you uh, didn't notice, it's a huge risk for me to put a prediction, especially a 312 electoral vote prediction out there, because if I'm wrong, I look stupid. If Trump would have lost, I would look very stupid. Uh, and most people, nearly everyone I knew who's a predictor, hedged their bet. They said, oh, Trump's going to win or Kamala's going to win. They never say the, the number. I wanted to get out and say, we're in the business of predicting and engineering the future. We need to understand how the future works. And a very important part of this understanding is quantification of risk, quantification of votes, quantification of share price, of cash flows. We need to be very good at that. We should use these opportunities to put ourselves out make our predictions, and then get measured against it so we can calibrate our models. So I'm glad I was right about that. Um, and, you know, we will have more here on this channel talking about the future. Uh, I will have a better setup very soon. I'm on the move right now. And uh, we will think more about 
what this all means, that what just happened, that Elon is taking over the government, that we have Optimus, we have FSD coming, now Tesla in a tremendously advantageous position, what this all will turn out to mean for us as shareholders, investors, and how this whole future is going to unfold, where we have Optimus taking over Earth, Elon taking over Earth, whether you like it or not, and what we can do as people to participate and be on the right side of history to make sure we're actually making money with this, to make sure this age of abundance of unlimited stuff and intelligence benefits us and doesn't crush us because we will all lose our jobs with a few exceptions. And we all need to become capital owners. And a very important piece of being a capital owner is you need to own the capital assets that actually generate this abundance like Tesla. It's very important. And to time this right, to quantify it right, how many Tesla shares do you need to own, especially in this new golden age that's coming now in the next four years. Very important. So please stay tuned. I hope you subscribe. And there will be much more coming where we discuss how we exactly can execute a strategy that capitalizes and puts us on the right side of things. So hope to see you soon. And um, until you know, my next stream.